Thank you for joining us tonight. The U.S. House has voted to impeach President Donald Trump for incitement of insurrection at the Capitol. The impeachment vote taking place amid heightened security in the Capitol building. ABC's Elizabeth Schultze is at the Capitol with the latest. The re resolution is adopted without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. A historic day in the House chamber, one week after it was mobbed by pro-Trump rioters. Lawmakers voting to impeach President Donald Trump for the second time, a first in American history. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. The House voting on a single article charging President Trump with incitement of insurrection by encouraging his supporters to march on the Capitol. Several Republicans joining the House's more than 200 Democrats to achieve the simple majority needed to impeach. With a heavy heart and clear resolve, I will vote yes on these articles of impeachment. But many other GOP members are still standing by the president. This is a reckless impeachment. This will only bring up the hate and fire more than ever before. The debate on the House floor taking place in a Capitol building fortified with security and where gunfire rang out seven days ago. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi touring the perimeter in a starkly different image than at this time last week. More than 6,000 National Guard members are already in Washington, some even sleeping on the Capitol's floors. And defense officials say up to 20,000 guardsmen could be in the city before Inauguration Day in one week. And amid worrying new details, the FBI had warned that extremists were heading into Washington last week determined to wage war. And with the possibility of more threats ahead, President Trump issuing a new statement, read on the House floor by one of his staunchest allies in Congress. I urge that there must be no violence, no lawbreaking, no vandalism of any kind. And ABC News has learned the Senate will not come back early to start an impeachment trial, so the earliest it could begin is January 19th. That could pose problems for President-elect Joe Biden's agenda. Remember, he will be inaugurated one day later, January 20th. Elizabeth Schulz, the ABC News, the Capitol. And tonight we're digging through the misinformation about the impeachment that is floating around online, like this tweet about President Trump with more than 181,000 retweets. It says, for those wondering if it's worth impeaching him this time, it means he loses his 200,000 plus pension for the rest of his life, loses his $1 million a year travel allowance, loses lifetime full Secret Service detail, and loses his ability to run in 2024. Both of our experts agree the wording is off. In other words, if his term ends on the 20th at noon, he gets these benefits under current law. But if the Senate tried and convicted President Trump, he wouldn't get a pension, travel funds, or other benefits, but an impeachment alone would not strip the president of these benefits. There are a lot of questions surrounding the second impeachment of an American president. We're here to sort through the noise and get you the facts and the legal expertise. So joining us now is constitutional law professor Mark Kendi from Drake University. Hi there, Mark. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks for being here. One of, sure. one of the top questions we do have that we're getting from our viewers is about the precedent of impeaching a president for the second time. This is the first time it's been done. So is it even allowed by the U.S. Constitution? Absolutely. There's no uh, restrictive language as to how many times the president uh, can be impeached. So in the absence of that restrictive language, uh, it can be, although it's clearly, like you said, uh, a, a first time occurrence pretty much. The Senate Republican leaders are saying they won't take up the article of impeachment until after President Trump leaves office. So can there be a trial for a president after he does leave office? Well, that actually raises a serious constitutional question that I don't think has been answered clearly. And I don't think it's answered clearly in the document. Um, obviously, supporters of impeachment would say, of course, you've... Uh, you know, impeach the person, you have to therefore go forward with the next stage, which is to have a trial as to whether the person should be convicted. It's in the interest uh, of both the person who wants to be found innocent and those who want to find the person guilty to go forward with that trial. But the, again, impeachment language in the Constitution doesn't really speak to that. So, there is a little bit of precedent that might support that historically. 
So some people have drawn on that little bit of precedent. Uh, it's an interesting issue. If I were uh, President Trump's lawyers, that would be one of the first issues I would try to raise, probably. So do you think it's likely the Supreme Court will have to weigh in on any of this? It's very complicated, you know, because one problem for the Supreme Court is the Chief Justice presides over any trial that would occur in the U.S. Senate. And so if the Chief Justice is also involved in a judicial case about whether the proceedings can go forward, that creates a complicated situation. And sometimes the Supreme Court does what I call punt, to use a football term. They, uh, they sometimes try to stay out of things and let Congress actually be the one to make the decision. So it's possible that they could just say, look, we're going to let the Senate decide whether they can do this, or it's possible they could get involved. Um, I'm inclined to think there's a chance they might say, we're going to let the Senate make this decision. Okay. So if the president is convicted, what happens then to him? Well, he basically is going to be barred from serving in uh, office again, particularly, you know, office that requires uh, the taking of some sort of an oath. Uh, so that's basically a prohibition on public service for the most part uh, in the United States. Uh, it could certainly have an effect on some of his benefits, although I'd, I'd have to sort of look more carefully into that. But I think the main effect is going to be any dreams President Trump or his supporters have of, you know, Trump 2024 would uh, go out the window very quickly. All right, very complicated issue, and we're in new territory here. So we appreciate your expertise, Mark Kendi. Thank you so much.